Hello, I'm Ben Pearson, the Roaster Tracker, and today we're going to talk a little bit about Teslas and how they manage to deal with really cold weather. As you can see right here, maybe, the temperature outside is 12 degrees Fahrenheit. That's about minus 11 degrees centigrade, so it's a pretty chilly day. We have the little blue icon here, which shows that we are currently driving in cold weather conditions, although I'm currently parked. And... Uh, what that really means here, if we go to the little pullout that shows the energy usage, you can see this little blue area here. That is miles that the battery is too cold to actually use. So, unfortunately, you know, we don't get that full range here, but uh, it'll warm up eventually where we can start to see what's going on. So let's go ahead and pull this back up. Now, I haven't started the car yet. Um, see regenerative braking limited we can actually see here the full range of what we can do both acceleration wise and deceleration wise it's actually so cold here we can't accelerate at full power because we can't drain the batteries that much it could do some damage to them which is okay we don't need full power but the regenerative braking here is everything to the left of the center point and you can actually see that there's nothing there so we have almost no regenerative braking. When we actually start moving, you'll be able to see the line that shows how much energy we're using. And uh, it's not really going to do that much. So let's go ahead and get started. Pull out of my driveway here. You can see how little we have the regenerative braking. It's not really working at all. Now, eventually it will warm up a little bit. Um, you can see I have the seat warmer on. That's Electric cars do much, much better with seat warming than warming the entire cabin of the car. So I'm trying to do that, although it's cold enough right now where quite frankly, I don't think that's gonna happen. You can see I was using it last night and the battery was warm enough where we could actually do this, but this is probably the chilliest I've ever driven this car outside, so. It'll be a little bit interesting. Now I am getting a little bit of a regenerative type braking, although it's not actually showing that I'm getting much. When I let go of the brakes though, it does slow down a little bit. But it's definitely something I gotta be a little bit more conscious about. And have to use the brakes, which I don't have to use them very often in this vehicle. So, this point in time, the seat actually feels kind of nice. I had been in the car for maybe two or three minutes though before I started recording this, so it's uh, already had a decent chance to warm up. So the distance that I am going to be driving today is about 25 miles. And if we show here the, you know, here I am, 623 leaving in the morning, we can see how much energy we've actually been using for this trip. Now, my global average since I've owned this car is about 230 miles, uh, 230 watts per mile. I tend to drive a little bit on the more conservative side, and so that's actually pretty good for a Model 3. 245-ish is what the kind of standard is. So far, we're not doing so great today, but that's not that uncommon. With the short distance, you can see that the acceleration points at time, it uses quite a bit more energy take a look at the predicted range you'll see that I'm actually getting way way less predicted range than the range actual indicator is it, that's okay now I normally don't do this very much but I'm actually going to turn on the heater here for a little bit kind of see how much energy that ends up taking here and part of why I don't use it but it's actually chilly enough today where I'm uh, feeling the need to have a little bit of extra heat
more than the seat warmer. The seat warmer works great for five to ten miles. It does less so with longer distances. Now, interestingly enough, it's showing that I should be able to get a little bit of energy through the regenerative braking. Although, I think where that's actually showing up is it's converting the um, regenerative braking into heat for the car, which is kind of neat. So the regenerative braking will work a little bit better if you have the heater turned on. You can see though that our power usage has just absolutely spiked. Looks like it's warming up a little bit now. 14 degrees Fahrenheit, about minus 10 degrees centigrade. For those Kelvin enthusiasts, 263-ish for memory. And you can see that, yeah, in fact, the regenerative braking, quote-unquote, was really just taking the energy and piping it into the, um, the heating system. With a gas car, they have a source of waste heat because you are basically burning gasoline in order to produce the energy, so there's extra heat that they either have to get rid of through the radiator or in the winter they'll get rid of it by pumping it through the car cabin. So that way you have heat, and the heat is basically free and it's quite useful. In an electric car, you don't really have that kind of a sense of wasted heat. So any electricity that you use to heat the car will take away from your range some. As long as you're aware of it, you can be fine. But there's a number of factors that really limit the range of an EV when you're driving in the winter. The batteries don't work as well. Your regenerative braking doesn't work as well. You have to heat the car, which uses a lot more energy, and overall, they just won't work as efficiently. Although, as we see here, the efficiency of the car will start to go up quite a bit as we start to warm up the battery, and in fact, we'll probably approach something fairly close to what we normally get. My um, 220 or even less, maybe down to 205 watts per mile. One way to avoid this issue is if you charge your car, then the act of charging the car will heat the battery, and so you won't have this as an issue. You can see so far this trip has been 400 watts per mile. That's actually pretty significant. Um, essentially, I'm using twice as much energy for this drive thus far as I have for my normal ones, although it's going pretty rapidly down. The plot that you see here is the plot of my driving for the last five miles. The Model 3 does not have a steering wheel heater, and so it doesn't heat that up, although just your hands enough are enough to warm the spots of the steering wheel that you typically use, although Having a steering wheel heater is kind of nice. You can see the predicted range is already starting to look much, much better. Although, when we get rid of these peaks where we were heating the car, and then get rid of the peak where we accelerated the car to the speed for a freeway, then we'll start to get a much, much better idea as to how well we're actually doing. Now, at this point in time, we've kind of equalized. We were going five miles here on the freeway without using the heat for any of this time period. And you can see that we're averaging about 260 watts per mile, roughly, which is a little bit higher than it typically is on this stretch of the road. But it's not unreasonable. The electric motors are definitely not as efficient in the cold. 
and I'm not really seeing any regenerative braking as you can probably see there's not really very many cars this time of the morning so I'm not really having to brake at all but still it's pretty consistent we still don't have any ability to use the regenerative braking at all I'm actually dropping out of autopilot here because I know there's a stoplight coming up and I kind of want to give the car a little bit of a chance to slow down before we get there and since there's not a lot of traffic I'm not too worried about that. Eventually that will allow the battery to be heated up enough to be used. We can already see that I have almost my full use of acceleration based off of the temperature that it is right now. Although still not much use of the regenerative braking. Now I do have the follow distance set on this car for about five car lengths. I will increase it in conditions where the regenerative braking isn't working as well, so that way we can use a little bit less of that and be able to just do better overall. As you can see, the average watt hours is actually going down quite a bit. This is something quite reasonable, more common for my typical commute. Now, part of that is that I'm going a little bit slower than I normally do, which is allowing for more efficiency, but still, it's continuing to improve the efficiency of how well it's operating overall as the system continues to warm up. So at some point in time we stopped recording, but I just wanted to give you guys a quick update. I've driven about 25 miles at this point in time. The blue light is still on, I still don't have full use of the regenerative braking or even full use of acceleration, but it's still behaving pretty well. Getting extra battery power if you live in a cold area is essential because you will not have as much capacity as you do during the warmer times, and that's alright. But it's not really too terrible and overall the experience of driving a model 3 in the winter it's not so terrible thank you guys much for joining me let me know whatever questions or comments you guys have let me know what your tips are for driving an ev in the winter and until next time keep on tracking take care